Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome back to Weather Center Nazario. It is October 16, 2023. This video is probably going to be brief. I am not at 100% just yet. I'm not too sure what happened over the weekend, but Saturday night into Sunday morning, I came down with what felt like a pretty solid head cold and what almost turned into the flu with, you know, the traditional muscle aches, the chills, the headache, etc. We're definitely feeling better today. Thank you all for your positive words of encouragement, and thank you for kind of pushing pause in terms of our Weather Center segments. I had a live stream scheduled yesterday that I couldn't make because I just needed the extra rest. So forgive me if it seems like we're not getting as detailed or intensive with this video, but I still want to update you because whew, we've had a lot of big updates across the board. We're starting off on our water vapor satellite image and right from the jump start, you can see we have another deep trough axis digging its way into western Conus and the western Canadian provinces. This is going to be our next major cold player working its way west to east across the United States, really helping to bring down some more polar air that we already have inundating the eastern half of the country and the eastern halves of Canada. You can see that our upper ridge, our sharp amplitude ridge blocking pattern has since broken. The jet is now running across the northern Rockies and then troughing back down over the Great Plains, outlining the trough that's really helping to give us some good weather for most of the Great Lakes into the mid-Atlantic region as well as the Ohio, Mississippi valleys and of course down here in the Sunshine State. I have my window open right now as a matter of fact just letting all that cool air in. This is going to change however with the introduction of these new long wave troughs coming on the west coast, what we're looking at is the possibility of another significant nor'easter for the mid-Atlantic and northeastern states ready to go as soon as this upcoming weekend. We're also keeping an eye on the tropics. We have multiple invest areas to keep an eye out. We have 94L, which has been causing all sorts of chaos for all of our model platforms. The Euro has been doing rough with it. GFS is still doing its own thing. Icon, Canadian, UK, Korea, you name it. The halves A and B, everything will go down the whole list for you guys. Every model has been struggling with this and it's making our jobs rough because it almost looks like we're communicating inaccurate information and we definitely don't mean to guys we got to ebb and flow with these patterns just as much as the models do we're also watching out for invest 90 e if I'm not mistaken that's the moniker this one has been given out there off of the Mexico coastline this could follow a very similar pattern to what we saw with Lydia only about a week and a half two weeks ago so we're watching that but I have been noticing some positive trends both in the tropical Atlantic and in the East pack for that matter let's talk so here is 94L, and you know, last time we made a video on this bad boy, we were looking at the formation chances all the way up to 80% in the next two days, and a 90% almost guarantee we were going to see something in the next seven days. This is only a small glimpse of how many significant changes we've had with just this one disturbance, and it has all our models working overtime to try to encompass it. In my true professional opinion, we are not in a bad scenario for this storm to develop. It just chooses not to. And I know that sounds a little bizarre, but I've been looking at all the conditions. The shear has been very lax, especially below that 10 degree latitude line. We also have some pretty decent moisture, not a whole lot of dry air out there, and good sea surface temps. The ocean heat content is on the low side, though. I will say that I've been looking at ocean heat content for the MDR, and I do believe, climatologically speaking, that's why this storm is having a little bit more of a hard time getting going. It has enough energy to start making the convection around its center, but not a whole lot of overall energy to wrap up and really consolidate and become a named system. The caveat to that, even though we've seen some pretty positive trends in terms of this not becoming a hurricane at the blink of an eye, is the weaker system is more than likely to create more impacts for our Leeward Islands in particular. We'll talk about that here momentarily, but guys, I want to say right out of the gate, I do apologize if there's been any what seems to be hype or fear mongering just because of how dramatically these models have been adjusting every 12 hours. It seemed like at 0Z we had doom and gloom, and then at 12 Zulu, all of a sudden there's nothing out there. So I've been doing my very best to try to accommodate for this, and I think that's also the reason why I'm feeling a little more run down, because I kid you not, I've been running around like a chicken with its head cut off, trying to look at everything across North America, the Pacific, and out across the Atlantic, to try to get an understanding of why all of our models are so back and forth, one extreme to the other with this system. As I mentioned, we are looking at a weaker system out there, which means we're starting to see our model guidance pick up on a more westward track. I have the icon on the left-hand side and the Canadian model on the right-hand side. And as you track this through time, all of our models are still consistent in terms of seeing some sort of intensification out of this. You can see the Canadian model still anticipates as we get closer to the leeward windward islands, we're going to start to see it deepen down into a moderate or greater tropical storm with the icon stand on a little bit more of a conservative side. But both of these have the leeward islands especially taking a direct hit from this system. If you guys remember what I talked about on Friday and Saturday, it's a give and take with the 
atmosphere. We have a weaker system now, at least indicated currently. There's been so many changes. Who knows what the next 12 hours are going to look like, but we've seen a lot of great positive trends, and the alarm can definitely go back into more of a caution mode at this time. We could still see some pretty decent winds off of this, as well as high surf, and of course, you named it the flooding as well, like we saw with Tropical Storm Philippe. So it goes without saying, we definitely have to keep getting the word out that there is something on the horizon, just maybe not as cataclysmic for those of you out there who've been watching as we'd initially expected going through the middle parts in the latter half of last week. It doesn't seem like we're going to see a hurricane just yet. It also remains to be seen if it does finally get to deepen down a little bit more once it gets out of the Caribbean and into the Central Atlantic. We have the Euro model here as well, and the Euro has been honestly the most windshield wiper-ish with this storm. We went from a Cat 4, almost Cat 5 a few days ago, all the way down to what looks to be a remnant low, if not maybe a very weak tropical depression working its way into the Leeward Islands. You track this through time, and you can see we have a closed center of circulation and a bit of an increase in the overall wind intensity. Tracking it right through our Leeward Islands is nothing but more of an aggressive tropical wave or maybe a disturbance. So the Euro has once again lost all confidence we're going to get a whole lot of development out of this until it can get into the Atlantic, but by then it's almost too late because it becomes absorbed in that nor'easter system and that very, very strong polar high that creates a tremendous amount of offshore flow. You can see wrapping around the eastern periphery of that system, moving south, and then eventually through the Caribbean and through the Gulf of Mexico. So we have a very mass amount of cold air getting ready to come down out of Canada. And I do believe it's because of the blocking pattern and how much cold air the models are trying to accommodate for over North America that they've been struggling so bad with this system out there in the Atlantic. All right, well, let's go to the East Pack because I've been noticing that this has been trending up and up for the last couple of days, and we can't leave you guys out there in Mexico out to dry because we know what happened with Hurricane Lydia not too long ago. There are some positive trends with this, and we're kind of in a bare-knuckle brawl once again between the GFS and the European model in terms of what this system wants to do. We are going to see development, and it's funny how we went from AL94 being an 80-90 split, now we have EP90 out in the Pacific at an 80-90 split. So we are going to see development, and it looks like something else upstream could become another named system out there as we go over the next seven days. Here's our intensity guidance, and like I said, this is going to develop up, but I'm also seeing a positive trend with the introduction of that next cold push, that long wave trough out over the Pacific impacting the west coast of the United States. Because of that, the models are almost in a battle of wits right now determining if this system will hold its category one or greater intensity before making landfall, or if that cold air and that trough coming across the west coast is going to absorb and strip it of a lot of its energy and become nothing more than what looks to be maybe a tropical storm or if not a remnant low before it can fully work its way into Mexico. So kind of the same difference here with these systems. We are expecting a good amount of development with 90E out there in the Pacific, but it looks like very similar conditions, at least right now, we can anticipate for our Leeward Islands in the Atlantic and for Mexico, interior parts of Mexico, as this system moves ashore. Winds and the likelihood of intense storm surge is not going to be the case, but we definitely have to track how much precipitation or rainfall this system wants to bring ashore because we know that Mexico and all of Central America, for that matter, at this point, is done with the rain. They don't need any more out there. There have already been some catastrophic reports of major flood damage and the death toll increasing between 20 to 30, if not even higher than that, because of how our thunderstorm activity has just been lingering over the higher terrain and dumping copious amounts of rainfall for them. All right, so we've gone over to our heavy hitters. We have the 0Z Euro on the left and the GFS 12 Zulu on the right. And the reason I bring this up is because even though we're expecting that system to maybe weaken off the Mexico coast and Baja Peninsula before moving inland, the reason I want us to look over the United States is because it's going to play a role in what could be some very potent activity over the plains, the four corners and desert southwest, and further east, or as that next long wave trough begins to propagate east, a little bit more to the south than we've seen from our earlier systems moving in the Pack Northwest. This looks to come ashore somewhere along the California coast and move through the four corners altogether. You track this through time and it doesn't matter which one you fixate on. You can see as we go towards the four to five day mark, there goes our next system out in the East Pack moving north, getting ready to move its way inland. But at this point in time, if you look at the Euros indication, we have it beginning to weaken. The trough in the upper levels is now playing its role in stripping a lot of that tropical moisture and pretty much slingshotting it straight through Mexico into parts of New Mexico and Texas where it'll meet up with a new frontal 
horizontal line developing off the front range of the Rockies. The GFS, on the other hand, if you look, has a very organized major hurricane approaching the Baja Peninsula, and this is where we be go into that boxing match between our two heavy hitters here. The Euro wants it to dissipate, the GFS wants it to stay strong and move inland as a potential hurricane. Both of them, however, you can see as we get towards the very tail end of both runs, bring that moisture into the southern and central plains, and especially the GFS shows a potential severe weather outbreak as these two interact together. It's a textbook severe weather pattern. We have a lot of good warm tropical moisture surging from the south and a dense column of cold air coming out of the Rocky Mountain Range. So this interaction could definitely help spur up some very strong thunderstorms as that frontal line begins to move across most of the Great Plains. Let's zoom in a little bit and take a look at what the GFS is indicating. As I mentioned, we're going to see that hurricane develop off the Mexico coast, but you can see that as our next system moves in, it's already deepening down to a 967 millibar major hurricane at this point. You can start to see some of that troughing in the upper levels. This is our 250 millibar wind, so this is at the jet level. As that system moves in, the GFS does not want to shear it apart, but you can see how it gets picked up by that deepening trough directly over top the Intermountain West and Great Basin area and move in across Mexico before impacting Texas, Oklahoma, and then becoming our next bear clinic system once it picks up that jet support as well, moving into the Central Plains. So all in all, guys, as the title of this video suggests, we have a messy half of October ahead of us. There's going to be quite a different number of things we have to watch out for, and the troughing that we see coming on the West Coast is only going to get more and more intense, and these cold plunges are going to get a little bit more intense as well, which is going to change the outlook with a lot of these storms. We're going to transition from seeing mainly flooding and heavy rainfall to a conglomeration of rain, snow, and unfortunately freezing rain for that matter and mixed precip. Taking a look at our 12Z GFS, we have a rain-snow mixture on the chart here. There goes our hurricane making landfall in Mexico, very quickly weakening, and then there goes all of our moisture, not only getting picked up by our trough in the upper levels, but then that massive 1030 polar high over the eastern half of the country is instigating quite a bit of return flow. You can see the isobars are parallel to where our system makes landfall, and as such, the winds around this anti-cyclone are going to pull a lot of that moisture from not only the Gulf of Mexico, but the eastern Pacific directly into the plains. So we can't rule out that we'll see some increased tornado activity as well as some hail with high convective winds associated with this feature. And then finally, as you go towards the back end of the run, there we have it. You can see our next major system begins to deepen. And then just behind that, we have our next unstable wave moving through the northern plains and the northern Rocky Mountains of Canada and through the northwest quadrant of the United States. I have this turned on because you can see just the amount of differences we have in our precipitation. And especially at this point, getting closer to the Halloween time, October 28th, you can see a tremendous amount of snowfall. Then our mixed band of precipitation, this could be anything from sleet, freezing rain for parts of South Dakota, Nebraska, and even Colorado and parts of Kansas as well, alongside that butting up against that warm section of air coming out of the Gulf of Mexico in the deep south. So we'll definitely have to see how this plays out. That could be a very, very good line of severe weather occurring for a large area of the interior portions of the United States. You really can't put a timestamp or a title, I should say, in the amount of areas that could feel influences from this storm. We have a very strong polar high, a bona fide polar high at that. We have our 528 and our 540 thickness line surging out of Canada. So that is as bona fide of polar air as you could get. And that's exactly why the interaction with that high pressure over the south, drawing in a lot of that equatorial moisture and that warmer air from the southern regions is going to create a thin ribbon, or I should say an expansive ribbon at that of temperature discontinuity and as such severe weather. We're going to go ahead and wrap up the video here, guys, though. Like I said, we have a lot of things to investigate, a lot of things that are on my radar. And I know a lot of you out there who provide this same weather content and continuous coverage are also tracking it as well. Thank you so much for tuning in folks i promise not to bail out on you tonight for our 8 p.m tropics talk we're going to talk everything in a little bit greater detail i hope to see you then and i hope all is great in your world have a wonderful start to the week and we'll see you again soon this is weather center nazario signing out